Hey boys and girls, uh, my name is Brother Donnie and I'm going to be teaching a session on uh, Ezekiel and the Valley of the Dry Bones. Okay, so you will take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. That's where we're going to be learning about the story in our Bible. I'm glad that you're a part of Count uh, Crosspoint and I hope that this uh, session will inspire you and encourage you with maybe a story that I don't know, maybe you're not as familiar with. Uh, this is one of those stories in the Old Testament that God has a great word for us to, to learn, okay? So how about let's pray, and then we'll dive right into Ezekiel chapter 37, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you for today, and I thank you for all the boys and girls who are tuned in and listening at Count through this virtual uh, video. I pray you bless them. Pray you to open our minds and our hearts to understand your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. What in the world is this story in Ezekiel chapter 37? What, what is the main point? Okay. I think every story in the Bible has a main point. And here's what we're trying to communicate in this story. I think that God is teaching us. Okay. And that is simply that God gives us hope. All right. God gives us hope. That's the main message in here. Okay. Now, um, part of this video uh, that you're going to see, uh, one of the things that you're going to notice is that I've, I've got some friends that I want you to see, and it's me and, and those friends were having a good time. And what I want you to do is just take a moment, watch the video, see if you see any difference, okay? See if you see any difference in um, our time together or the things that we enjoy um, and We'll be back in just a moment to talk about this story in particular, okay? So I hope that you had an opportunity to see the difference between um, the friends that I have. And of course, I brought a couple of my buddies along here. But you know, there was a part of the video that had us having a good time. Uh, me and my friends, we were having fun outside, enjoying life, and just honestly enjoying one another. Okay? Now, that's the kind of life that the Lord really wants us to have, but understand that Ezekiel, he saw that other side where these people just seemed like didn't have no life, couldn't get anything out of them. They were just dead, all right? So here's what we want to kind of tie these things together for just a moment, okay? When I say hope, there's a lot of things that come to mind. Um, sometimes people think of hope like uh, wishful thinking, okay? Like, well, I, I hope that it won't rain today, okay, because I want to be outside and play with my friends or go do some things I want to do. Well, it might rain, it might not, okay? Um, I know that God's Word is the living Word of God, okay? I don't wish that it is. I know that it is, okay, because God has said that His Word has been established forever, okay? So those things are 
our hope that we can have strong belief in, okay? Now, Ezekiel is speaking here to a people who had lost hope, all right? Now, I'm going to break this um, down into um, a couple of things, all right? I'm going to, just two main things, if you want to try to remember this, we're going to talk about the setting of Ezekiel 37, or the background. I mean, what, what in the world is... Is Valley of the Dry Bones, and who in the world is Ezekiel? All right, so we're going to uncover that in just a minute. And then the second part of it is we're going to talk about the significance of the message, all right? So let's talk about the setting for just a moment, okay? The setting is the background. Who, who was Ezekiel, all right? Well, Ezekiel was a, a prophet of God, all right? A prophet was a, uh, a, a preacher uh, who spoke God's word. When God gave him a message, he spoke it and said, this is what the Lord told me to say. All right, Ezekiel was also a priest. Now, we know that because in chapter 1 of Ezekiel, it says so, all right? Now, um, Ezekiel, somewhere, it really didn't get a chance to, to serve as a, as a priest very long. Uh, usually about 25 years of age is when you started uh, your work as a priest, and um, that means he's working in the temple. But um, he didn't get to stay there very long before these, these people called the Chaldeans, all right? So some, you can remember it this way. Sometimes it's Chaldeans. Sometimes they're called Babylonians. What happens is these, these are some mean people. And what's going to happen is um, they're going to come and they're going to take Ezekiel, and his friends off to a far away land, okay? They're going to hold them captive in a, what's called a captivity. And so this is a very uh, nice part of the story, okay? But it's important for us to understand about the Valley of the Dry Bones, okay? Um, Ezekiel and his friends were very discouraged, okay? Well, let's just think about it just a moment. Wouldn't you be discouraged if... Suddenly some mean people came and they took you away from your home. They took you away from this land that you live in. They took you away from your family. Took you away from your friends and your neighbors. Okay? Well, they were discouraged. Man, they're living in a place now that, that they weren't very um, uh, happy about. And they were very upset. Okay? When you get the... The bigger picture here, we has to, have to ask the question, why? Why did all that happen to Ezekiel and, and his friends? And um, Well, the reason is because you know, God had been telling uh, Ezekiel and the Israelites that you need to repent and follow my ways. they have been saying this for years and years, and the people wouldn't do it. In other words, God would tell them, you know, I want you to love me. I want you to obey me. I want you to treat one another kindly. I want you to do nice things. I want you to honor your parents. I want you to obey my commands. They wouldn't do it. And time and time again, God kept warning them, if you don't do that, your sin, and that's what that is. Anytime when God tells us to do something and we don't want to do it, we're rebelling against God. Well, that's, that's sin, and sin breaks God's heart because God knows what that sin will do to us. It's going to harm us, and God kept saying, if you don't listen to me, then there's some bad things that are going to come, and guess what? They did. It happened. These, these uh, Chaldeans, Babylonians, they came, and they took Ezekiel, and they took all his friends away. Now, guess what? Sometimes... Even the good people uh, experience the consequences of others, uh, their actions, even though we're responsible to God for our own actions. Nonetheless, we live in a world just like right now uh, because of maybe some other people's actions. We also experience some of the effects of that, okay? Well, Ezekiel felt the effects of it too, and he was taken into this um, um, new land, all right? And he was hurting, his friends were hurting, okay? But, uh, so saying all that, that's the sad news here. But listen, this story that we read here, this is good news. 
Okay, so I want to get to the good news and talk about the significance of the message, okay? The Valley of Dry Bones is a vision, all right? It's a picture. It's kind of like if you've ever seen somebody who maybe is uh, texting a message to their friend on their phone and all of a sudden they, uh, they say, well, you know what, I'll just send them a picture, okay? And that picture, they see it, or a video, and they say, oh, okay, I get it. Okay. This would be Ezekiel over here. And God sent him into this valley of dry bones. I mean, just look at all that, okay? So that's kind of what Ezekiel was looking at, okay? Now, he sees this um, picture, and uh, he places him in this valley of dry bones, okay? And what, he, what it is, is it's a picture of death, okay? Uh, God's people had felt like they had died. In a way, they felt like they had died. They, they felt empty. I mean, look at this guy, okay? He, he's hollow inside. He's empty. There's nothing. He, there's no life to him, okay? And he, these people, Ezekiel's friends, were feeling like there's no nothing to live for. There's no purpose in life. Well, I mean, we've been taken away from our homeland and they felt really sad. That's the picture that God put Ezekiel in to look and see. This is kind of like what my people are feeling like, okay? So this vision is a picture of a people who are hopeless and they feel empty and they, they feel like there's no life within them, okay? But the, here's the good news. The good news is that God says to Ezekiel, now listen, he said, Ezekiel, Ezekiel look, look at these bones. You think they can live? And Ezekiel, he, of course, he doesn't know. And so he says, God, only, only you know. And God does know, doesn't he? And so God says, you know what? He says, I want you to prophesy. That's another way of simply saying, I want you to speak. I want you to speak to these bones, okay? Speak over them. And if you look back at verse number five, you still got your Bible open? Okay, look at verse number five. Notice what it says here. He says here, Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. And I will put sinews on you, um, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive and you will know I am the Lord. Wow, okay. So, so think about that. So God says to Ezekiel, speak this, what I just said, and these bones are going to start coming together. In fact, if you read uh, verses 7 through 10, that's exactly what happened. God, uh, Ezekiel spoke, and the bones started coming together, okay? And the Bible says it's kind of like a rattling. So if you think about my partner right here just a moment, just pretend for just a moment his bones were scattered all out. And all of a sudden, the foot bone got connected to the ankle bone, and the ankle bone connected to the leg bone, and, and there's a rattling. And all these bones started coming together, okay? Now, only God can make this happen. You understand that there's power going on here, and this is God's power. But it wasn't just the bones that came together. Um, it says sinews and tissue. Well, what in the world is that? Well, it's just kind of God just doing something like only God can do. I thought I'd bring this along. I've got this little book that kind of shows you uh, something kind of, whoa, look at here. Woo! Can you believe that? Now, there's more to us than just our bones, isn't there? Okay? We've got muscles, and we've got tissues, and we've got organs. Here's some guy's lungs. And here's his intestines and his blood vessels going through. The, now, is that not a cool uh, diagram? Okay. So, all of a sudden, this person actually begins to be formed again. I think that's a kind of cool thing, what Ezekiel began to see. All right. Wow. Man, a lot going on in that picture. So, that was pretty awesome. Okay. So, then, after all these the, the outside skin came on, and then all of a sudden Ezekiel's looking, he, they're still not alive, 
And so then he prophesies to the breath or to the wind. And God's wind, God's spirit begins to breathe all throughout the valley, all inside these bones and, and these uh, human bodies now. And all of a sudden, they come to life. And then Ezekiel, he's just like, standing in awe of all this and he looks and he sees an army, an army of people. Wow. God can take that what looks to be dead and bring it back to life. Man, that's the message. God brings hope. God can take dead things and he can bring them back to life. And God says, I can take you and put you back together again. And I can bring you back home. Hey, do you know what that must have meant for them? It, can you imagine that they actually said, we're going to get to go home? We're going to get to see our family again? We're going to get to see our friends again? And do you realize what that did for the, the, the genuine, real people of Ezekiel? They, they began to have hope. And they said, wow. You know, God can do things like that. In fact, the rest of the story also speaks more. In other words, he uses everything about the people and their bones coming back to life and the people uh, actually having a hope to return home. But God even says something more about this. He says in the verse 14, I'll put my spirit within you. Wow. And you will come to life. Now, there's more going on than just people going back to, to the land of Israel there. Because what we find over in the New Testament is something like this. You remember Jesus? No, Jesus says something about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He says something like this. He was talking to a guy one time, and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he says this, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what he's saying is that the day is coming when the Spirit of God will breathe and cause a person who was dead spiritually to come to life. Okay? Let me tell you exactly where that's at. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 2, you want to turn there just a moment? I'm going to read, here's what the Bible says about you and me. Now listen, this is important. Ephesians chapter 3, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Did you know that? Do you know that if you've never come to Jesus and trusted him as your Lord and Savior, you're spiritually, you're dead. You're like those bones, all right? But did you know that God will cause you to really, really be made alive by his spirit coming to you and helping you to see who Jesus is and causing you to be made alive when you trust Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. Did you know that? That God can take people who are dead spiritually and cause us to have real life. You know what? That happened for me when I was a teenager. I was 16 years old, and I thought I was living and really enjoying, but honestly, my sin had caused separation from me and God. And so I wasn't living as I should. I wasn't obeying God either. I was kind of in a faraway land too. And all people who never have trusted in Jesus are kind of like that. But God came to me and God spoke to my heart, helped me see that Jesus is his son, that Jesus died for me and that he was buried and he rose again and that he'd come into my heart and make me truly alive if I would trust him. And you know, I felt God's spirit convict me of my sin, helped me realize I was a sinner, but I needed to ask Jesus to save me. You know, I did. I asked Jesus to come in my heart and save me. He made me alive, spiritually and in every way that you can imagine to give me hope and to give me life. And I'll tell you, this story also points us to something else because Jesus says 
or Ezekiel says in Ezekiel 37, God says that he will cause the graves to open. So again, it means something like this. Did you know on the final day when you know, Jesus came and he died, he was buried, he rose again, he went back to heaven, and he's been there at the right hand side of the, of the Father. But the day's going to come when Jesus is going to come again. And when he comes, there's going to be a resurrection. And the resurrection, all the graves are going to come open. And all those spirits, those mamas and daddies and grandparents, pe people have died, perhaps. Maybe your parent hasn't died or somebody that you love has not died, but somebody, uh, somebody, uh, maybe someone in your family or someone you know has died. They're with Jesus right now, okay? But the day's going to come where that, that body that was put in the ground, it's going to be, it's going to rise. And, and the Lord is going to, take that spirit and he's going to take that body and he's going to remake them and then they're going to be glorified, okay? And we will be glorified and we'll live forever in heaven with the Lord forever. Did you know that? See, all of that is simply pointing this way. It's saying there's hope. God is saying in this entire story, I will give you hope. I'll give you a home, okay? I will give you life, and I will give you life for all eternity. It's not about staying dead. It's about being made alive. And God can do that for everyone. Can I ask you as I close, do you know Jesus? And I'm not talking about just in your head, but honestly in your heart. Have you ever asked him to forgive you of your sin? Help you understand that you have sinned against God and you've rebelled against him. All of us have. And have you asked him to forgive you and come in your heart and save you? And the Bible says for us to repent. It means for us to turn away from sin and turn to Jesus. And he'll give you a brand new life. And he'll give you a hope. And not only all these things I've talked about, about living forever in heaven, but also giving you hope right now. Let me pray with you, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. And thank you that you give us hope. Thank you that... This hope is not a wishful, I hope it might happen kind of hope, but a real hope that's solid and genuine. Thank you that you can change our life and cause us to truly be alive. Help us to be grateful. Thank you for all these boys and girls listening. Help everyone listening to know that with God, there's always hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for listening. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Give me a high five.